All right, you guys, I am ready to roll. Arizona Deer Draw is live. It is available to apply right now. The regulations have been released, so we know what we can apply for. We know what the season dates are looking like, and it's time to rock and roll Arizona Deer uh, 2023. So I'm going to break it down uh, unit by unit, subunit by subunit, and kind of go over uh, the different regions and uh, what to expect with the different deer hunting options that we have in Arizona. Um, I really want to make it simple for you guys, really want to educate you guys. Um, it, this is not rocket science, um, and it's not as complicated as it appears. You just kind of have, have to have an idea of how it all works. So that's my goal, guys. My goal is to kind of, um, uh, I don't know, be a, uh, a uh, translator kind of really translate the deer draw on how it all works and also uh, get you guys educated on what the units are, what the hype is all about in certain units um, and the deer draw odds for all these units, which is extremely important for you guys that don't have any points for non-residents that don't have any points for you residents that have no points and all in between for you residents that have 20 points and non-residents that have uh, 15 points, all that kind of stuff. So really give you a baseline idea of what's going on this year with the draw, what to expect. We have had excellent moisture almost statewide, uh, really good moisture in the elk areas and along the border so far this year. It's been uh, really, really good. We will see how the spring continues and see what the summer monsoons will bring, but I am... Uh, I'm guessing it will be a very, very strong antler growth year. And also, it's not only about antlers, guys. It's about uh, fawn reproduction. It's about healthy herds and good food and all that kind of stuff, too. So that helps us in the long run. All right, I'm going to break it down and start from the top. If you're going down the regulations, I want to start with Unit 1. I'm going to kind of lump Unit 1 and Unit 2 and Unit 3 all together. They are very, very similar, and uh, the terrain is very similar. The antler buck quality is very similar the only difference really is that um you know in unit one you actually might be able to shoot a whitetail uh, or a coos deer as we call them so in any unit where you see any antler deer that means any deer is available to shoot where in in units that have a substantial amount of both species both coos deer coos whitetail deer and mule deer they will differentiate and different hunts will be given according to each species so anyway Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, then they're all broken down into subunits, Unit 2A, 2B, 2C, Unit 3A, 3B. Well, what really matters to you guys is uh, the terrain and kind of what to expect. So these units are all very relatively flat. Yes, there are really big peaks, um, Escadia and stuff like that, uh, Baldy, and uh, some other mountain ranges that are in, you know, in that general terrain um but really realistically guys this is not a big time backpacking in type hunt for mule deer um you're looking at very drivable units so unit one very very drivable very road huntable um and also unit two and unit three so unit two is comprised primarily of state land that's all the blue squares and the white squares and all the checkerboard stuff same with 3a 3b Anything that's green is national forest. So uh, the northern end of all these units is basically state land, a lot of cattle land. And that is where you will find a lot of these mule deer. So in these units, deer and elk do compete. And these deer will live right alongside these elk. But for the most part, these deer can survive a lot better and won't have to compete with the elk if they're in a little bit more arid environment. So if I was applying for these units and I was approaching the hunt, um, I would stick personally to some of that northern area of all these units. So um, unit one is a little different. You know, mule deer are kind of sporadically throughout unit one, but the northern side of unit one is all junipers. Um, and glassing knobs and and just knowing mule deer bucks and their patterns they really prefer to kind of be out of the traffic uh, and that includes elk that includes does that includes humans that includes a lot of things so if you're looking for a, a mule deer buck specifically a mature mule deer buck you kind of want to get away from all the heavy traffic cattle as well so uh, you know there, there's a ton of cattle around yes deer have no problem coinciding coexisting with these cattle but 
if you're a mule deer buck, you don't really want to be around a ton of just overall traffic. Uh, that's what I've noticed. I kind of like to be uh, not completely isolated, but just in lower areas where people and other deer and other you know animals aren't frequented as much. Um, so that being said, on the northern half of these of the all these units, guys, is primarily state land, juniper country, kind of rolling hills. Now the deer will definitely uh, graze, and they're also browsers too. So they'll eat those juniper berries. The elk have adapted to eat the juniper berries too, but they really prefer to be down in some of that cooler, more pine country where there's a lot more water available. Um, in the northern half of the unit, pretty much it, in all these units. So, um, and you can kind of see on a map, it's a regional kind of, they all align um, and, and they're all kind of north of the Mogollon Rim uh, and they border both the Apache Reservation to the north and they border the Navajo Reservation to the south and New Mexico to the east. So all of these units, when, when all that state land is, it, the water is comprised of cattle tanks, which is earthen ponds. Um, in Arizona, we call them tanks. They're typically just, uh, just you know, dirt that has been formed to catch water or, or also be filled by water uh, from the ranchers with cattle tanks if things are really, really dry. So um, the mule deer quality in these units, guys, is going to be pretty similar. Um, you know, obviously there's the outliers. You can shoot absolute giants in some of these units um, because the deer herds are kind of they, 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 they can live a little bit longer in some very arid areas. It's also, they can kind of drift back and forth in between the Navajo Reservation and New Mexico and, uh, and then Apache Reservation as well. But for the most part, guys, what you're looking for is kind of that 150 um, up to 180 class deer as far as a mature mule deer buck. So you can get really mature old mule deer bucks that are 150 inches. You know, they're either on their regression or their genetics just aren't uh, capable of producing inches bigger than 150. So that usually means they're crabby um, and crabby means the tine length is very small. It's like a crab. If you hear anybody say crab claw, that means um, kind of how a crab is shaped. Uh, they're not real deep forks, not real deep tines. Uh, a lot of these deer don't get really wide. Uh, they're kind of more that mountain muley, kind of like um, at their ears, 24, 25 inches wide. Art is typical. I'm not saying you can't find a 30 inch wide deer in there because they're definitely there. Um, and I'm not saying you can't find a 200 inch deer, but what to expect if you're applying for those areas is expect the terrain to be very uh, accessible uh, via quad, via truck, uh, and foot. Uh, expect there to be a lot of water to be checking um, because most of these units, guys, are great elk units. And in that, that being said, there's usually a lot of water. Anywhere there's a lot of water, there's elk. So um, expect to be checking water um, and understanding, you know, the difference between an elk track, which is big and fat, cattle track, and also a deer track and kind of understanding where the deer are hitting. My advice is to really stick on the northern end of most of these units, uh, unit one, unit two, unit three, and uh, really focus on that and really do your scouting up there where you can actually look um, and get a, get a look and, and do some real scouting from elevation points and do some glassing um, at longer ranges and try to get a pattern on these, uh, on these mule deer. So, um, you know, Obviously, there is deer in the pines, and deer in the pines, um, you usually you'll see them driving around, and you, you can see them hiking around, walking around, and usually when you see them, they're under 100 yards away, so you got to make a decision quick. So I 100% I am not saying do not hunt the lower elevation, which is the pine trees, but what I'm saying is if you are looking and trying to isolate a specific deer, a bigger buck, I would stick to the juniper country where there's a little bit more elevation and you can actually do some real scouting. Um, as we know, cameras are illegal, so you cannot use cameras. So you really have to do this uh, old school and you have to be uh, boots on the ground to try to locate some of these deer guys. So um, that's what to expect if you're gonna be hunting unit one, unit two, unit three in Arizona for mule deer specifically. You know, like I said, there might be a random whitetail, who's whitetail deer that'll come across and uh, and hang out in unit one. I actually think there's a small population of, of whitetail that live in unit one, um, kind of that border of 27. But, uh, you know, that's, 
that's uh, only if you're looking for those guys. So if you're if you're looking for a big mule deer, um, go into big mule deer country, which is typically a little bit more arid and uh, a lot not a whole lot of traffic of any sort. So um, I hope that helps, guys. We are we are uh, kicking off uh, 2023 with uh, uh, the deer draw, and it is awesome. I'm fired up. I'm glad it's open. We have until June 6th. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be coming out with uh, just notes and, and and kind of education and all how this works and draw odds that you guys can see that I'm going to be posting alongside my videos so you can kind of reference that if you are interested in certain units. Um, if you're interested in any kind of hunting, guiding, uh, drop camp, scouting, anything like that, hit me up in the description below. Um, I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. So anyway, guys, good luck this season. Um, and I've got more com more videos coming soon. Take it easy.